TV Musings time with fall TV preview review of The Flash season one, episode one, pilot. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm continuing to look at the premieres for fall TV in 2014, and it's time to look at The Flash. Woohoo! Um, this is definitely one of my most anticipated TV uh, series of the year. I am very much looking forward to it. Uh, the, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's it's it, it's a superhero, you know, TV show. Uh, they did a previous series back in the 90s. I don't actually, I didn't watch it. I don't remember it at all. Anyway, but the character of the Flash is the fastest man alive. That's the premise. So we follow Barry Allen, who is the fastest man alive. And this is sort of like a this first episode, which I am going to talk about pretty specifically, um, is about the sort of how his character came to be the fastest man alive, some backstory, and some looking forward and kind of stuff, which actually was a little different than I was expected. I was curious about this uh, from right from the get-go, and it actually had, there was a backdoor pilot in last season of Arrow, and season two of Arrow, and normally I don't like those, but this one I actually found it was more just of a character introduction and sort of an inkling to, you know, the possibility of the genesis of his character from Barry Allen to the Flash because yes we know from most superhero stories that it all either involves some kind of accident or mutation or experiment gone wrong and this is actually could be all three could be all three it's at least two but it could be all three um so the so I got curious about it from seeing the character in Arrow he's totally likable like he just really felt for the guy and um I was like of course I'm, I'm gonna watch this I loved last season of Arrow, so I was like, yeah, this is awesome. They're in the same world, but I don't know how much crossover there's going to be. I actually hope there isn't too much crossover. There was in this uh, episode, but uh, it didn't. I watched Arrow first and then The Flash and it didn't make any difference, at least from my perspective. <laughs> so what it's really about is actually, I think what the series will really about, there's a whole sort of superhero element of saving people. I'm trying not to say hunting things. More on that later. Um, so it's definitely a superhero story. But there's also definitely a mystery involved. We find out from the backstory that Barry's mom was uh, killed and his dad was sent to prison for this. And at that time, and there was this sort of strange encounter type of thing where Barry says that he saw someone running really, really quickly, just like he can now do. And so who is that person? No one believed him. His dad's in jail. So there's definitely a... Wonder what the road so far there is. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Oh, <laughs> so and then there's also some metahumans. Uh, there, which because what happened, what really happened to Barry was that he, um, was struck by lightning. But he was struck by lightning in the sort of cascade effect of this particle accelerator, that experiment, you know, type thing that went wrong, and cascaded, and then. Sh just affected a lot of the city. It sort of hit something, made him be hit by lightning or something, a storm. And, um, but it also affected many, many, many other people. And so we're going to, and they call them metahumans. So the Star Labs people call them metahumans. And so there's definitely, you know, he'll have to hunt down the baddies. It'll be interesting to see if there's any goodies in, in, you know, the realm of this. Will he find any allies? That'll be interesting. In terms of the people involved, we have Grant Gustin as Barry Allen. I thought he was great. Um, we have Candace Patton as his best friend, Iris. Obviously, he likes her more than a friend, but... That's not going to happen, at least not so far. We also have Jesse L. Martin as Iris's dad or and or Detective Joe. Um, Rick Cosnett as the pretty boy cop Eddie. <laughs> uh, Danielle Panabaker, who I am, is driving me bananas what I know her from. I mean, I looked through her IMDb and I, I don't know what it is that I know her from. Anyway, she plays Caitlin. And she works at Star Labs along with Cisco, played by Carlos Valdez, and Harrison Wells, played by Tom Cavanaugh. And so I actually, one of the things I actually quite liked about the Back to Our Pilot is there was this emphasis on Star Labs as well as Barry. And they're, you know, they do sort of, well, their particle accelerator <laughs> experiment went wrong, but they do lots of science-y, you know, stuff. So they were housing Barry while he got hit, after he got hit by lightning, went into a coma, they took him because he kept on <laughs> doing something that made the whole hospital lose power or something like that. Anyway, I'm sorry if any of those total specifics, other than the actors' names, those are right. But if the specifics and the backstories and the whatevers are a little off because I'm not, I don't know this character beyond, you know, general 
general knowledge. I don't know the backstory. I haven't read the comics. This is just from watching this episode and the backdoor pilot. And I did, and I, you know, and it's weird to be from outside the universe looking in because there's certain things that I picked up on. Um, but I did really enjoy it. And a lot of what I enjoyed is Barry. He's, it's nice to have a character that's a hero. That's a hero. That he's a nice guy. He's a keener. He's smart. It's, and then, but he's also goofy, you know, and, you know, a little, I don't know, hasn't had the best of luck, you know, but there's, it's weird because there's also a darkness because you, but you don't feel that. Like, you know, he's had a troubled, a huge troubled past. His dad's in jail, his mom died, but he's still this really nice, keener, you know, smart guy. One of the things I didn't understand, though, was before there's, because this episode sort of is like before the accident, the accident, and after the accident. So I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to be after the accident. But I guess if people didn't see the backdoor pilot, they have to explain what happened. So it was a bit of a weird, for me, it was a bit of a weird um episode and they showed him before the accident and he could like look at something for like half a second and like be like CSI genius and know what tread this you know car tire thing was and I was like what how can he do that like that felt like some kind of special power kind of thing but I don't know if it's just that he's smart. If he's just that he's smart, that's great. I just wasn't picking up on that. And then it's also weird because then some of the Star Lab stuff and talking to them and, you know, working with them, you know, I feel like if he's really smart, maybe he would have picked up on some things. Although by that time, he's really emotional. I don't know. So that was a little weird. I was a little surprised at I have to admit, I was a little surprised at not, like, I did really enjoy it, and I would rate it very highly, like, probably a 9 out of 10, but I thought I would rate it a 10 out of 10. I thought I wouldn't question anything. I thought I wouldn't wonder about anything. I thought I would just enjoy it, and I did. There were so many things to enjoy. I love the superhero element, and it really feels like superheroes, too, And but it's not as dark as some of the other shows out there. Um, but, yeah, it's really fun. It's really quotable. Things like... <laughs> You know, like him asking to keep the t-shirt, the sweatshirt from Star Labs. Like that was hilarious. Like there's the key, it's the keener element in him that I find really compelling. And so I hope that they keep that. Um, and I will give that it is unpredictable. I, I, I admit, I don't know the backstory, the front story, the whatever story, like the history of the character and the, the other people in the universe. But there were definitely some things that I was like, oh, I'm a little suspicious of this person. And then I was like, I knew it. I don't know what's going on. And I don't know what that means, but I knew it. So there was a lot of sort of fun things like that to engage in. Um, but one of my big concerns is, oh boy, does this feel like Spider-Man meets Supernatural? You know, like has a big event, all of a sudden, you know, he goes from like, you know, like, sort of geek, you know, guy to I have abs and can do anything kind of thing. And then the whole story with the mother, oh my gosh, that feels like supernatural. Like, it really, it really feels like supernatural. And it's not like, you know, that's not like them finding out the mystery of your family history. Like, that's, you know, that, that's not unique. <laughs> you know, that's a story that probably comes up in every single, you know, TV show, but it's just the specificity of the mother and not knowing and being a kid and not understanding, and this could lead to a different world or a different understanding of the world, and here you are on your own. You know, your dad's there, he's involved, but he's inaccessible, like, uh, <laughs> supernatural, right? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, anyway, I guess one of my biggest concerns, though, is that I hope I don't figure it out, and and I think that's just, it's not even necessary. I think it's actually having that outside perspective and just story, seeing some of the storytelling things in general that I'm trying to, because I assume part of this first season, at least, will be trying to figure out who or what, you know, that person was and um, that killed his mother. And if there's any actual relationship that he has to him, because they showed both in the scene with the mother, as well as the scene right before he gets hit by lightning, that the water and liquids in the laboratory or his kid bedroom moved upwards. And it's like, could that be a significant, significant signifier of him? Or is that a signifier of this other person? Or are they two of the same person? Kind of not like 
twins or something like that but like are they you know related or whatever so anyway so i probably actually shouldn't have gotten even into that because if that is the truth it feels like really ahead of the game to figure it out but you know other people could be totally going no shannon that's totally not what's going on and that is fair play and that's one of the things that makes it a fun and engaging show that there is lots to look at it was really action oriented so if that's your thing it's definitely got that um and i think and i think one of the reasons why for me it's a nine not a ten is that I don't know the characters well enough yet to really feel for them. I do feel for them, but it's just you don't get that super crazy invested wholehearted thing, I think, until you know them. Because I like, think for me that happened in the second season of Arrow. And that's because it was the second season of Arrow. You had been with those characters for over a year. So I think that's that's what it is. And I'm, I bet you in the second season of Flash, if it continues to a second season, I probably will feel like that, or even before that. So, because I really, I do like a lot of the characters, but some of that depth, you know, comes over time. It doesn't come right away. So, but overall, a lot of fun. Definitely a highlight. I think it totally just blasted the ratings. Um, it was really highly watched and uh, very enjoyable. Here in Canada, it airs on CTV, 8 p.m. on Tuesday nights. And the first episode is still available to watch online if you haven't already. And I definitely recommend it. So enjoy The Flash. <laughs> Take care.